Hello, my name is John Dalton and I'm a craniosacral therapist. I have been for about the last 15 years. I've been teaching people to be craniosacral therapists for about the last 10. If you do a Google search for John Dalton craniosacral therapy, you'll see I'm all over the place. Now, if you don't know what craniosacral therapy is, then this little video probably isn't for you. And if you look at the search you just did, you can find out all about it. If you do know what craniosacral therapy is, and you're a craniosacral therapist, then this video is definitely for you. Well, number one, most, the mistake that most people make is, um, okay, I'd say this is, this is the symptom I'm looking for, okay? And uh, this room is the person's body. Most people, when they put their hands on the person's body, they're like, I know it's in here somewhere, right? You know what that feels like? And it's really important because this is causing a lot of pain, right? Now, I encourage, it's there. It's like, number one, the person comes, they've got a problem, okay? So you know it's there, okay? See that? It's there. There's something there, okay? If you were sent into the room and you were, and I said, go and find a videotape, and it might be there and it might not be there, okay? You'd have to, you would have to look around, wouldn't you? Because you don't know whether it's there or not. You'd have to check everywhere, okay? But because the person's come to you, they've got something wrong, okay? It, there's something there. There is a something in the room, okay? I encourage you to get this kind of sense of a very comfortable armchair, and you're sitting in it, okay? And your back has got to stay in contact with the back of the armchair the whole time. If you start leaning forward at all, you're doing it wrong. Okay? So if you're just sitting there very comfortably in your armchair, okay, just taking it all in, well, there's the wall, there's the door, there's the windows, well, there's the videotape, it's like that. See, their system is working with you. So if you're off slightly, it'll communicate it to you in some way, and usually the language of it is through the symptoms. So you, it'll throw you a bone and go, you're on the right track, so there'll be improvement. But you're not completely on it, and there'll be disimprovement or some symptoms, but not all will improve. Yeah. Like I'll never say to someone, oh yeah, no problem, this is going to work. I'm always very cautious. I'm always like, well, all I can say is you've got these restrictions and you've got these symptoms. They look to me, from my experience, like they're related, but it's only when your symptoms have gone that I'll be able to say to you they were definitely related. So we have to start and see how we go. I'm still saying that to people. And my success rate's really high, it's about 90%. Sometimes it peaks to 95, meaning that 95% of people who come get what they came for. When it comes to teaching craniosacral therapy, I've always looked at my results and tried to duplicate them. Because I reckon I'm not special, and if I'm getting these kind of results, then everybody who does craniosacral therapy should be getting the same kind of results. But sadly, they're not. So as I began to investigate that, why they weren't getting the same kind of results I was, I discovered that there are certain things that they just weren't doing or thinking. And that's what this Masterclass DVD series is all about. It's the different perspectives that just really bring up your effectiveness levels. Uh, okay, now let's, let's go back a little bit. You, uh, you've just had an argument with somebody, okay? You realize you're a bit disturbed. Before the person comes, you Settle yourself, the person comes, you're nice and blank, you put your hands on them. And let's say this person's got a lot of anger, and you start to pick it up. And let's say they're angry with their, one of their parents, let's say they're angry with their mother. What do you think you're going to feel? Do you think you're going to feel angry at their mother? No, you're going to be angry about the person you had the argument with, because it has to come through you. Your, your body and your mind will, will use that. It'll communicate to you the anger, but it'll use you know, your stuff. So if you're not blank before you start, you will think you are just continue, continuing on the disturbance that you had with the person. Does that make sense? But it's a thing that's really easy to miss. You kind of think, oh no, that's not them, that's me, because I'm thinking about that person I had the argument with. So it's easy to get confused. So if, you, if, they've got, if they're sad, 
it'll come through as your sadness. You'll feel sad about the things that you feel sad about. Make it your goal, if you like, to become a master of uncertainty. That you're really comfortable with it. You can, if you think about the difficult times in your training, what you will have been up against is your desire for certainty. I want something substantial here. I want something solid because it's all soupy and black in here and I'm lost. Anyone relate to that? <laughs> well, the thing is, that's what I'm saying. The reframe is it's supposed to be. That's the territory. That's the territory you've engaged in. It's supposed to be that. And the paradox is that you have got to be certain about your uncertainty. Another way is, um, did you get Doctor Who here, that program, Doctor Who? No? Yes? It's a science fiction program. He's uh, this kind of space guy who kind of goes through different times and stuff. The, the, the point is his spaceship is, is called a TARDIS. And it looks like a phone box from the outside. Just a phone box. You know, this big. You can walk around it. See the back of it. You know, and there's always this joke, run and joke. Come quick, we've got to get back to my spaceship. You know, and they run up to this phone box on the press gun. This is your spaceship? He goes, yeah, yeah. He opens the door, and on the inside, it's this vast, cavernous, huge thing. It's got, it just keeps going. It's, it's just huge. And then, you know, steps in, closes the door, and disappears, you know, disappears, does the spaceship thing. And um, I, always remember, I always remember that with, with people's bodies. They always feel like that to me. Not what they appear. This is just an appearance, and there's this vast, deep thing behind what's going on, well, behind what's apparent. Sometimes what I say is very confrontational. Not because I'm trying to be confrontational, but just because of the way you have to think about things to become more effective. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about becoming a better craniopsychotherapist. It's about becoming more effective. It's about when people come and see you, that they get what they came for, that your success rate improves. In many ways, it's a numbers thing. The more people you see, the better you get. It's real simple in one way. But then you've got to also be practicing the right sort of stuff. Because I did, I did rollerblading for three years without any lessons. So I did lots of practice, but I was still a really mediocre roller, well, I still am actually, well, okay, it was a really, really bad roller bladder. And then I got like two or three lessons and I started to associate with a group of people who were very good and my roller bathing ability just jumped. So practice on its own doesn't do it. It's got to be the right kind of practice. I'm not into big cathartic releases. I don't go for it. I drain. I think of myself as I help things to drain and fade and dissolve. So if there is a big cathartic release, fine, I'm fully capable of handling it, but I prefer not to do it. I'll be encouraging the system to dissolve restrictions rather than explode them, to implode rather than explode. The reason I prefer that is for a few reasons. Energy stays in the system more, it's transmuted, so it stays in the system. They've got more energy for feeling good, well-being, they're not you know, totally wrecked after it. The other thing is, <coughs> big cathartic releases is, 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 give you a space for the person to think you're fantastic, to think you're wonderful. I'm always suspicious of that. I like, to th I like people to go away slightly wondering if I actually did anything at all. Just slightly. Some part of them, deep part of them knows, is grateful. The top part is going, you know, I just kind of got better. I don't even know if that guy, you know, wonder could I have done that on my own. I always feel good about that. If they go away going, oh, that guy is so fantastic. Before I went to him, I was such a mess. After I saw him, my life turned around. He's so fantastic. If only for him, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I think I failed if that happens. Because what have they done? They've totally disempowered themselves and given it all to me. And I didn't want it anyway. Um, and if you can see it, that's all right. Look out the window, look around, distract yourself, because your mind will be going, Wow, this is so amazing, I really want to see it. I'm getting in the way. <laughs> I mean, you were doing that already, were you? <coughs> so if, that's hap if you're having trouble seeing it, that's probably what's happening, is your mind is getting in the way, so distract it.
don't start talking or anything, but look away, look out the window, start consciously thinking about something else. To find out more, go to opensourcecranio.com forward slash masterclass. Should be written on the screen here somewhere.